So this is a 63-year-old gentleman with a past medical history of DM and duodenal ulcer. He presented with wake abdominal discomfort for many years, and a CT abdomen in the March showed two heterogeneous hypo-enhancing masses in the pancreas, and 4.2 cm in the body and 2.9 cm in the head. And um, MRI abdomen in April uh, commented that the pancreatic masses appearance is suggestive of a serious cystinoma. So in May, a US and FNA was performed with a well-demarcated hypoechoic microcystic lesion in pancreatic body. The appearance is more solid than usual, and the FNA revealed atypical cells. And patient is reluctant to undergo surgery. So this is the CT film of this patient. So today we would uh, perform US guided FRA. So actually, RFA. what you're going to demonstrate to us? Yeah, this is uh, Habib US RFA probe. Uh, this is very thin, one French in size. So it can go inside the uh, uh, 19 gauge or 22 gauge the needle. So I'm going to use this Can probe. you zoom, zoom to your uh, a blue background for us? Wow. This wow. is very thin. Very thin. Yes. We convince and, uh, So the beauty of this probe is it can go inside uh, our usual uh, FNA needle. Uh, but before uh, human application, I want to show you how it works. Uh, I asked them to purchase some liver or foci liver. This is foci liver. <laughs> And uh, I am touching the probe on the surface of the liver, and uh, uh, the setting is uh, 10 watt, and uh, they they usually use uh, this uh, power for two minutes to create two cm length and one cm diameter ablation zone. But uh, before uh, ablation, I just want to know how big is the ablation size because it is important to prevent any kind of complications uh, can you see the uh, pro uh, liver clearly yeah. yes yeah, we can see the it. i am uh, pushing the pedal to cause ablation can you see some changes on the surface yes, yes we can yeah so this is uh, actu actually causing coagulation necrosis on the surface of the liver but uh, during the procedure, we will apply two uh, minute uh, power. And uh, after ablation, we can see, I think, uh, just a moment. Can you see the linear thread like ablation zone here? Yes. 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 Yeah. So uh, if it's inside the pancreas, we're still linear. I yes. Mean, still yes. linear. Yeah. So, uh, uh, to create a larger area of ablation, uh, we probably need uh, to do multiple procedures, multiple puncture and multiple ablation. But uh, I'm sure that with this probe, uh, it's going to be safe uh, because uh, the ablation zone is not very large. Uh, I also have used uh, the Stormed RFA probe that's uh, much more thicker than this, and uh, it can create about a 1 cm or 2 cm diameter ablation zone. But my ma major concern of using that probe is uh, the complication. But I think uh, probably everybody can understand how this RFA probe works inside the pancreas, inside the needle. So. Yes, yes, we can yes. see the images. Uh, I inserted the linear US scope for this patient. Uh, we are looking at the pancreas here. We can see the main pancreatic duct and the splenic vessels around here. So I can trace the pancreas uh, to the tail portion like this. Uh, there is some cystic area around here. Uh, oh, this is uh, the small cystic area, another one. is on here but this is the not main one uh, which uh, we've seen uh, on CT scan or MRI uh, I try to find the largest one uh, by rotating my scope to the head portion of the pancreas this is a splenic 
vein and uh, splenic artery but uh, I'm not focusing on it uh, here we can see the large uh, solid lesion here looks like solid can you appreciate it there is a rim this is a big lesion this area is big lesion is a little different from normal pancreatic parenchyme do you agree Yes. Uh, yeah. may not looks like a uh, normal pancreas but there is subtle difference this area is normal pancreas here but this area is cystic uh, lesion but because the cyst size is so small we can find many uh, numerous tiny cysts inside this area but uh, this area it looks like solid lesion but when you look deep into it there are tiny cysts uh, all over this, this area so this lesion is typical finding of uh, serious cyst, honeycomb type serious cyst adenoma and uh, again MRI T2 image confirmed that this is not a solid lesion cystic lesion so I'm gonna uh, because this patient complains of uh, abdominal discomfort uh, but the cystic lesion is serous cyst adenoma so uh, and uh, the patient does not want any kind of surgical resection so this case can be a candidate of uh, palliation by EUS guided RFA the size is around uh, 4, 4 cm the, this area so it, uh, sometimes uh, tiny uh, uh, if the serocystic tumor shows a uh, very tiny rocules microcystic type upon CT scan it looks like solid mass but should be careful by careful US examination we can identify tiny rocules inside and also again MR T2 image is very valuable for the differential diagnosis in this kind of lesion uh, for US guided RFA I already inserted the 22 gauge cook needle uh, uh, you can see the needle tip uh, on here on the right upper side of the screen yeah. and yeah. Uh, before puncture I want to check whether there is any uh, significant vessel is it common to see those uh, microvasculature in the yeah side? but I don't care much about that I'm going to puncture the cyst here because uh, the probe of uh, uh, RFA is about 2 cm in length so I want to have at least 2 cm distance before ablation uh, I punctured the cyst and targeted it down here can you see the tip of the needle yes yeah. and then I'm going to remove the stylet and then we are going to insert uh, RFA probe. So you will burn it from the distal part to the proximal yeah, part? Yeah, deeper part first. If you burn it, then uh, it will create an echogenic cloud. So the, ultrasound, the visibility on the ultrasound becomes very poor. So we need to target the deeper portion first. Then come closer, closer, closer to the scanner and uh, the ablation area is not that big so we probably need this uh, lesion is very big probably need to uh, uh, do same procedure several times uh, after targeting different areas of the cystic tumor like, like a fan shaped FNA technique yeah right right exactly uh, now I touched the tip of the needle now so uh, RFA probe tip and the EUS uh, R, uh, uh, the uh, FNA t needle tip is at the same level now. Okay. Uh, from here, I'm gonna target a deeper portion. So I'm gonna puncture a little more, and then okay, this is the first one. Uh, please uh, push this one and uh, about 2 cm 2 cm size yeah 
uh, pull back the needle but pushing the heater probe inside so I, I'm going to try to expose the RFA probe outside of the, sty uh, outside of the FNA needle so now I'm going to try to remove the needle while pushing the stylus this uh, device should be should be optimized for further use I think can you can you see some tip portion of the yeah, probe yeah, a little yeah. Bit. yeah. It's, it's now exposed yeah. uh, not to lose the yeah I think uh, the needle is uh, uh, about 2 cm withdraw, uh, in withdrawn position, so the uh, heater probe is exposed to the uh, cystic tumor area. I'm going to use, I am ablating the cystic region now. Uh, can you Yeah, that, that one. Actually, after exposure, okay, stop, stop here. Uh, after exposure, the needle tip actually uh, is withdrawn, and there, uh, the probe uh, ha have some angle, uh, because it cannot continuously maintain the position. So we ablated just a small portion of the cystic area, but we lost the position. So we need to adjust the position again. Then I will try to ablate another area again. Uh, uh, with uh, a StarMed probe, you can see clearly the echogenic uh, cloud formation. But with this one, I cannot see clearly the echogenic cloud formation yet. But I will try to different area. Sorry. I'm puncturing the cyst again. Uh, inside, there is a, a RFA probe. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry. I think. Uh, after ablation, uh, some tissue actually cauterized and uh, attached to the tip of uh, this uh, thin fiber. So the movement of this uh, RFA probe inside the 22 gauge needle is very difficult. I feel a lot of resistance now. Uh, I think. I thought you were using 19 gauge needle. No, no, this is 22 gauge needle. Oh. This is 22 gauge. It can go into the 22 gauge needle or 19 gauge needle. Uh, but uh, I think there is some clog attached to, to the tip of RFA probe. Do you want to change to another needle or change another probe? Uh, I will try to... Uh, I want to check whether it, it is better with a 19 gauge needle after removal of this 22 gauge needle. Okay. Uh, can you see the probe tip? Here, uh, yes. oh, oh, it's already bent too much. Too yeah. much, yes. Yeah. Uh, what happened uh, during the procedure was actually uh, after coagulation, there was some uh, tissue attached to the tip of the needle, and also this is very thin fiber like uh, hair. Uh -huh. So when I withdraw the style, uh, the needle from the RFA probe the probe cannot stay in position because uh -huh. this is too pliable. Uh -huh. uh, the patient actually uh, aorta is pulsating and respirate so the tip of echo endoscope can move, uh, can move uh, to, certain, to a certain degree. In the meantime, the probe actually bent it and uh, caused this kind of deformity. I see. Mm. So I think uh, the ablation zone is not enough, as you see from the ex vivo uh, posa and liver uh, experiment. It's not enough. And also, the uh, strength of this fiber is too friable. 
So, so need to be revised for yeah, the treatment yeah. of real human treatment, uh, really pancreatic tumor. With a more durable uh, uh, RFA probe for the uh, yeah. uh, needles. Yes, I'm sorry, I cannot show <laughs> elegantly. Okay, it's okay.